Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Radius Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we got to meet Lotta Hart, who is a bit of a stereotype, but eh. We also got to talk to Detective Gumshoe, and it seems he has something bad to tell us, so let's go ahead and talk to him. The victim. Do you know anything about the victim yet? No, no, still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. The meeting. So how did the meeting go? I can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth's human like you or me. Still, I got the feeling that if he had done something wrong, he wouldn't go hiding. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So they think that Mr. Edgeworth did it? Well, the trial's starting tomorrow is scheduled. I see. Um, hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand by Mr. Edgeworth. He needs your help, and you're the one. He needs help, and you're the one to help him. I'm sure he's got some reason why he won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Trusting Edgeworth. De Detective Gumshoe, how come you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that'd be obvious. We've got a strong working relationship, us two. We work, we trust each other, and that's how it works. A working relationship? See, Mr. Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty every time. Yeah, his methods might be a little extreme at times, but there's a reason. He trusts our investigation scene. He gets, he trusts us to get the right man. It's a bit sad to hear because from what we've seen so far, every single time we've seen Detective Gumshoe, he's brought in the wrong person. <laughs> That's why I work extra hard, pal. We've got to earn that trust he places in us. I see. Mr. Edgeworth is a man you can trust. And you have my word on that. The autopsy report. I was wondering, did you ever get an, that autopsy report? Oh, that? Yeah, I made a copy for you. Thank you. Nick? Huh. Can you show me that photo of the victim? That face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I met him somewhere a long time ago. That's all about it here. Let's head back to the Wright & Co. Law Offices. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just, something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey, I, I remember now. This guy. This is a lawyer that was at that office Mia worked at. I met him once when I went there to hang out with Sis. That office? Wait, you mean Grossberg's office? Right, that guy. That was the last name I expected to come up. Maybe I should go talk to him, for old time's sake. So yeah, this is our first example of returning characters, other than Maya and Edgeworth and Gumshoe, of course, but those are our main sort of four main characters. And this is our first sort of side character that we're getting to see beyond the case that they showed up in. December 25, Grossberg Law Offices. It's been a while since I was here last. Mr. Grossberg is out as usual. Hey Nick, look at the wall. That painting is still missing. Mia must have known about the deal with Mr. Grossberg in Red White. She kept track of all of White's extortion and blackmail rackets. Why is the wall there a different color? Big painting was hanging there until recently. Huh, what happened to it? Uh, well, he gave it to someone. I bet he gave it to some romantic interest. Love looms eternal, Nick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's even funnier if you pick the, uh, 
if in case two, when Phoenix says that he knows the connection between Grossberg and Red White, that if you you can pick the option, you're lovers, and I think that's an expensive plotted plant. I don't know why I keep saying plotted. It's potted. Potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. I think our Charlie is cuter. All right. He's really, he's a really cute plant. Table for clients. Hmm, an elegant ebony case. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that lighter's made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. We should put things on our client's table too. I'm not really into smoking. We could put out candy or gum. Classy. <laughs> So this is kind of fun because we're getting kind of similar retorts that, uh, or similar remarks, I, I should say, that uh, Phoenix said during case two when we examined all this stuff. But now we get to have Maya in here, which makes things ten times better. Solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Hey Nick, I want a desk like that in our office too. I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to sit in a desk like that yet. Huh? I meant for me. You'd better start saving your allowance, then. <laughs> Expensive-looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive-looking books. Hmm. Funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. Well, then, let's take them back to our office. You won't miss them. Uh, we don't need them. And can we take that wooden bear? Hmm. It is kind of cute. I feel like this entire series is just going to be me laughing at all of the different funny one-liners. So Grossberg isn't in yet, so let's head back over to see if Lada has gotten that photo yet. Looks like she might have found something. December 25th, Gord Lake Woods. Hey y'all! Lada! Wait up a sec, we got a bingo. Bingo. My automatic camera took two pictures last night. Hey. This is them, take a look. Wait, see, see, he's shooting him with a pistol. It looks like that, yes. But you can't really tell who, it, who that is shooting. Yeah, well there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog, but you know, Seeing these photos remind me of something. What? Or what? I saw that murder happen. I'm a witness. What? Are you serious? Of course. How do you forget? Never mind. Y'all reckon I should tell the cops? I reckon so. What's that? Now don't talk go trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. Y'all can have this photo. Later. Wait, Lotta. What? Can't y'all see I'm kind of busy? T tell us what you saw too, please. Ask try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness, and that means I'm on the side of justice. And that means the cops. I'd sooner eat the south side of North Bound Skunk than you tell you. Lotta. Don't let you. Don't let it get in your. Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. Is that the other way around? No matter. I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. Hot darn. She left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out in the trial tomorrow. Lake photo added to the court record. December 25th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Looks like the police have given up their questioning. Hey. Ah, Nick, I think Santa's mad at you. Long time no see, Nick. Nick. You know Santa? Wow, Nick and Saint Nick. Hey, I see the connection. Don't be ridiculous. Dude, it's me. Larry, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm working my day job. 
I sell samurai dogs. Want one? Gotta get money for dates, you know? My girl Keontae deserves the best. Keontae. Not another model, I hope. Oh, Keontae is a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear this costume. Costume. I don't know why I said costume. She's all like, you go, girlfriend, you know? She bought this costume for me. That, that's great, Larry. Wow, a Santa costume. She must be really nice. Whoa, cute. Nick, who's she? She's not your... Uh, my... what? N no, she's not. I'm his partner, Maya Faye. I'm, uh, the little sister. Sister? Wow, Nick, it must be tough. Working 9 to 5, having to take care of a little sister? No, I'm not Nick's sister. I'm my older sister's little sister. Huh. Sounds great. Don't worry, Maya. He's not listening. Yeah, Larry's back. I'm not the biggest fan of his, especially in this case and... I don't know if this is a spoiler, but future appearances. And... He's just not one of my favorite characters. He's just not smart eh, and not in a funny way. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it. It's just that he's so painfully ignorant, I guess is the best way to describe it. What happened? Hey, Larry, there was a murder here late last night. You work here. Have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Keontae, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oof. I think what you said just caught him off guard, Maya. No, it's just Keontae is not in town right now. She, uh, She's in Hawaii on a photo shoot. A motto. I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh. Me. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick! You don't mean that, Miles Edgeworth. Old Edgy? Yeah. He's a murder suspect. Whoa, murder? Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course. Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? So, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Yeah, Nick, him, and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he has always been a kind of stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, Edgeworth's pop was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Wow. Wait, you said defense lawyer? Yeah. Wait a second, but Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgeworth's got a proboscis on his knee? No, no, he's a prosecuting attorney. It's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Huh, go figure. He always used to talk about defending the weak who are, who are unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on about man's duties to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know Nick? Nick? Anyways, samurai dogs. Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I, I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. Oh, well, originally they were gourd dogs. You know, like guard dogs. Ouch. The samurai thing was Keontae's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know. She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made that banner. Man, the kids can't get enough of those samurai dogs. Um, something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. Well, with the big news. The big news? Yeah, Gordy. G Gordy? Good old Gordy. Um, what's Gordy? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here in this very lake. A giant, mysterious monster. Gordy. Uh, monster? Yeah. Check it out. 
This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. Here's a photo. Wow, it's really real. Nick, a monster. A real monster. Um, yeah. It's probably just a log or something. Right? Hey, there's a quote here from a person who took the photo. Hmm? What's this? I set the camera to automatic, and when we got into frame, I heard a loud BANG like an explosion, followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem. That'll be one million dollars. One million? Grow up, Larry. So yeah, now that we've got all this information on Gordy, and we know that Phoenix, Larry, and Edgeworth were all in the same class in grade school, uh, this would be a good place to go ahead and end off the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and see what else there is to do. Uh, we still need to find Grossberg, and maybe something will happen at that boat rental shop. Whatever happens, I hope you guys tune in. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys. Bye-bye!